Do you have a tendency to overdo it and overtrain? And is that what's getting in your way of getting an amazing body and great results? You're going to love this. Our first caller is Lauren from New Jersey. Lauren, how's it going? How Hi, can we Lauren. help you? Hey, guys. How are you? Good. What's happening? Good. What What an honor it is uh, to be here with you today. This is uh, totally inspiring for me. Oh, thank you. All right. So I kind of have two, a two-part question. Um, first part is I'm actually just finishing up Matt's split. Um, by the way, I loved it. I totally appreciate um, the effort you guys put in sequencing the exercise. I had done splits before. Um, I had never done anything like this that had such um, you know precise phasing. Um, I love the process of it too. So that was awesome. And, you know, following through with the step counts in each phase and then getting progressively bigger each time. Uh, I'm not going to lie, toward the end, um, it was a real challenge to complete it, but I'm proud to say that I completed every workout. Um, I hit every step count and um, I'm feeling really good. I'm just wondering where to go from here. So that I, I am someone who normally works out seven days a week. I have a tendency to overtrain and overdo it. But after doing your program, it was the most comprehensive program I've ever done. Um, I'm just not sure where to go from here. Certainly, um, I upped my activity level with it um, toward the end. And I know that for me, that that's not going to be sustainable long term. And I had really good progress with strength gains. So I'm kind of wondering, um, where do I go from here? I've heard you guys always preach that less is more, you know, training the three days a week full body. I feel like that would be a lot less than what I'm coming from. And I'm just kind of concerned about losing strength and losing progress. Okay, Lauren. Now, in your, in your question that you sent in, you also said you're a recovering cardio addict and you admittedly have a tendency to overtrain which I would have guessed because the first program that you picked from us was MAP Split. <laughs> yeah, I would have put, yeah. yeah, yeah, put you on anabolic first. Yeah, that's one of our highest volume, like kind of bodybuilder style workout programs. So do you want the advice that's the best for you or do you want the advice that you, you want to hear? <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> um, I, I really, I think I really need some tough love from you. Um to hear what, you know, to hear what, what I need, okay. um, you know, to kind of move forward. All right. All right. Here's some tough love. Okay. If you're going to do what I tell you, okay. If you're going to do exactly what I tell you, I want you to do maps, maps performance. You've done maps split. Oh. It's time to move into a program that trains different planes of movement that works on mobility. Don't worry. You're going to still get strong. You're still going to build muscle. Here's the best part. You can do MAPS performance six or seven days a week. So three days a week are the resistance training days. The other days are mobility sessions. And if you like movement and, and athleticism, um, you'll love the mobility sessions. They're still somewhat of a workout. It's much less intense, but they're going to improve your mobility and your ability to just connect to different movement. And they're going to help facilitate recovery. I think that's going to be the best next step because you just, you're, I mean, MAPS split is literally i mean one of our most advanced bodybuilder volume based workout programs so i'm not going to put you in another program that's similar maps on obolic would be great too but i think because you just did split i think performance is going to benefit your body so much um and if you trust what i'm saying and you just do it and don't judge the process but trust the process you will be very very happy with the results you get from that program I'd like to. I would have liked to have seen her do anabolic then performance, but I'll, I'll. I can. I can concede to performance. I mean, I think. I think performance is going to tremendously benefit her, but I think what would be best for her, her body, her personality type, and the, the things that she tends to do would be to get her out of that. Uh, you could make the argument that it, it's uh, going to be uh, very difficult. Uh, for her men uh, mentally to make that shift. Mm -hmm. But personally, I would love to see anabolic, then performance, then aesthetic, and then work your way back to a strong or a split type of a routine. That would yeah, I, I I agree. I do like that, that suggestion. Um, I think that that's probably the best, but it will be mentally 
difficult uh, again to to make that dramatic shift because you're going to be learning a lot of moves and things that probably you're not very familiar with so you know stick with it and and stick to the program and plan as as much as possible and trust it uh it's going to be outside your comfort zone for sure and not that it's not going to be fun it's just you know look at it as a totally new thing that you're you're there to kind of educate your body and, and go through the process yeah and the volume and mass performance is really appropriate it's not a super ridiculous high volume program the but it's not super sessions, low either though it isn't but the mobility sessions are good and you know what well, your body's just well here's what well, i forgot better. to add this too because lauren wrote in her question and i, I read your question you didn't just go into map split from beginner. You were doing Mike Matthews, uh, you know, split routine before you went into that, right? Yeah. So I, I fr kind of first got into, you know, I first started kind of seeing the light of resistance training um, and started doing far less cardio a couple of years ago. And I found Mike Matthews thinner, leaner, stronger. I was doing his five day split program, which was great. And knowing my personality, I turned it into a seven day program. Yeah. And then at a certain point, I just frankly got a little bored and I and I stopped seeing progress and I was a little frustrated. So that's when I found Max. Yeah. yeah and, 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 and with with his pro, because I know his program very well. Mike's a good friend of ours. Great guy. Um, really smart guy. And his program places a heavy emphasis on, you know, bench presses and rows and overhead presses. So that's why you went to perform. Yeah. And then he's, and then she went to split, which is bodybuilding, so I don't, but it's I don't, also very sad. So I playing. see where you're going with yeah. that. Okay. I, get, I see where you're going. That, that takes it because you're, oh, she's going to see a lot of, she's going to see some significant progress because of that, where maybe she'd see a little less progress going mm -hmm. to anabolic yes. because it's similar enough, even though it's different. Totally new stimulus. Um, but okay. That being said, then this is what I would love to see. Then I would love to see performance right now. Then to anabolic, yeah. and then when you go into anabolic, I would actually uh, use the mobi mobility sessions from performance and add them to my trigger days. Yeah, that's so great. if you like, if you like the you know six day, seven day routine, and uh, you and you want to do more, I, I think you you can do more, just more of the right things for your body that you'll get the most bang for your buck. And what that would look like for someone like you, in my opinion, would be the mobility sessions from performance and you can go ahead and, and add those into anabolic when you go into that. So I go performance and then anabolic with a, a like little, little combination of the mobility. Yeah, and, and here's why you're lucky, Lauren, because we recommended two programs. So now we're going to give you two programs for free, but I, you know what? I think we're, I think we're underestimating how much she's going to enjoy performance because she did marathons and triathlons. Is that correct? She's going to love the lunge matrix. Yeah, I, I love the process. And um, I'll, I'll tell you this. I already have those programs. Oh. Um, I kind of went crazy <laughs> during your Black Friday stuff. Oh, well, <laughs> and, there you go. Um, All right. Are you in the private forum? Because I, I would love to I'm follow not, up. I'm not in the private forum. Okay. Um, We'll do that. Let's put you in the forum for free. I just want to follow up on your progress. I think actually, because I know you did triathlons, marathons, you like functional movement, you like the sport aspect or that that aspect of training, probably. You're gonna love MAPS performance. It's gonna be a lot of fun training in that way. And then once you see how your body responds, that's it. I think you're gonna be sold on training your body appropriately. So let's do that. Let's put you in the forum, tag us, let us know what's going on. Adam gave great advice. MAPS performance to MAPS uh, anabolic using the mobility sessions throughout both of them. I think that's great. Thank you. That's that's awesome. And, and I just want to reiterate again, you know, I, I work in the fitness industry. I'm a, a GM of a fitness and wellness center. You guys have inspired me so much. Um, mainly, you've really opened my eyes to a lot of the mobility stuff. Um, I, I have Prime and I've you know, brought those skills um, into the programming here by encouraging the staff to add more mobility, more functional movement, especially into our group exercise program. We have a big population of active seniors here and they're just loving it. Um, I think the stuff that you guys say about making people feel good um, keeps them coming back. And I, th I think that's what it's all about. So I just really appreciate you know your knowledge your sharing of information and just the, the inspiration you guys give wow. every day i have a two-hour commute each way to work and um you're with me every every time awesome. oh that's awesome uh, you know what lauren you. now that i know that you you are you know, manage a, a, a fitness department i want you to start to treat yourself and train yourself like one of your clients because i guarantee if one of your clients came in and literally said exactly what you said to me on this podcast, your advice would be very similar to mine. Am I am I wrong or am I right? 
It's so true. I'm, you know, it's some, you know, I, I fall into the camp, uh, you know, adherence is never my problem. I'm, I'm like, you know, all or nothing, yeah. you know, kind of personality. And I, I tend to overtrain and push myself. I would never tell a client that. Of right. course, we, we always train our <laughs> yeah. clients better than ourselves. So try and put yourself in those shoes and you're more likely to give yourself better advice. Thanks for calling. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. No problem. People don't realize that the vast majority of people in the fitness industry have somewhat of a dysfunctional relationship when it comes to exercise. They do a great job with their clients mm -hmm. and they would give great advice to the clients. But, and by the way, this so is- So many trainers and coaches fall into that This trap. applies to me, yeah. okay? This, I'm, I'm talking to me Each as one well. of us here, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's, it's so hard, but I've had to do that myself. Like, what would I tell my client to do? Like, oh, it's not what I'm doing now. So it's really, really challenging when you're in that position. So I know what, I know what she's going to do. What is that it. paradox that causes that, Doug? It's like uh, you see that even like with with therapists and people. A lot of times Doctors people are, yeah, they're, they're talking to themselves, yeah. right? We, it's like the, the, they're, they're preaching this message and they're really communicating their own stuff. Oh, yeah. You know? Doctors and nurses are the worst patients. I yeah. think a lot of professions are like yeah. that. You, you, know, see, you see that even in like people that are like inspirational speakers and stuff like that. And then they're all depressed at home and yeah. shit. You, you know, know what it is? Right. I think what it is is... The you know if I if I'm talking if someone's helping me with let's say a, a disordered eating, the person who struggles with it, who makes this their passion and that's their expertise, probably will understand how to communicate to me the best and do the best job. I really I really believe that. So I think that's probably part of it. You know, like I, I, I know how to talk to people with this kind of relationship with exercise because. I live it. You know I think I mean? more of it is you're working your own shit out. I think subconsciously you know maybe what you're yeah. supposed to be yeah. doing for yourself, so you're you're comfortable with saying it. You're relaying it. Yeah, but you're not internalizing. Right, it. exactly. Yeah. But then you still struggle yeah. with taking your own advice sure. about it. But you, but subconsciously you know better because you either have, have read or you've learned over time, and so you do better with communicating it to others. But then taking your own advice is one of the hardest things to do. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.